Hey, it's me, Colin, and uh, I just wanted to share my testimony on how I got saved. Basically, uh, my childhood was pretty stupid. Uh, I grew up in, with a mother and father and very, at a very, very young age. Um, in fact, but, uh, my father ended up leaving uh, pretty early in my life, probably when I was two or three years old, before I could even remember. And when he left, I mean, at first it was like, I didn't really know, I mean, notice it all the well, because when you're that young, you know, you don't really know certain things. And all I had, all I really had at that point was my mom. And with my mom, uh, well, she wasn't exactly the best mom. Um, I mean, I give her props. I mean, she did change my diaper. She did uh, give birth to me. Uh, she did, you know, wash my clothes, you know, different things like that, which I'm appreciative of. Except there were times where she would, like, she didn't have, she didn't want to take care of me. And whether she realized it or not, uh, she... Like, she wouldn't go and buy food, you know, or she would, um, you know, she would go out and party. She would um, try to maybe f go on dates even. I don't really remember all that much because I was still young, but I just remember the lack of investment. So basically, um, from my early childhood all the way through middle school, ele or elementary and middle school, uh, I really developed... Um, hatred, a very, very strong hatred, not just for other people, but even for my own family. Um, from my brother, my sisters, uh, my parents even, you know, just everybody. And it was just, I, I had no love. There was no love there. And I was just consumed by it. I would even, like, even, uh, it was recorded even uh, in elementary school where I would uh, write, um, write, we had like these coloring books, or no, not coloring books, but like journals. And um, we would write down things that we felt or that, you know, was interesting or whatever. And when I was, I believe I was five, six, or even seven years old, um, I wrote in my journal um, a plan for like bombing the school. And What's crazy is, that's not normal for a seven-year-old. And I didn't know what I was doing at the time. But now, looking back on it, I was really just consumed by that hatred from all the way along uh, to back in my past. And eventually, um, during you know my elementary, middle school, and even high school time, I was really living with my grandparents because they were the only ones who would bother to take care of someone like me and my sister. And then, something interesting happened. Um, I went to youth camp. Um, it was Encourager Youth Camp. Uh, and I even think I went with uh, my brother Jacob. Uh, not my biological, but spiritual brother. And um, it was really interesting because during praise and worship, uh, I had, like, this image in my mind. It was really, you call it a vision. I don't care what anyone calls it, but I know what I saw. Um, it was basically what appeared to be Jesus. And he came up to me with, like, a Bible. And um, he opened it up. And when I looked and he showed it to me, he was like, he showed it to me like this. And when I looked inside, it was like a mirror. And when I looked, when I looked down, I saw my reflection. And I was like, Lord, or I know I didn't even call him Lord at that point. I'm like, what is this? He said, I am the word and you are in my image and in my likeness. And I didn't understand that, but somehow it touched me. Like, I, th I mean... I was just like, to, at that point, I was just like, okay. I mean, I didn't understand, but it was some, there was something about that where it's like, I had purpose, and I had meaning, and that really touched my heart. And then later, I was even, 
uh, really, I was like in my room, and the Lord really spoke to me, and it was even through a dream, where um, it was like, he, it was an image of him crucified, like beaten, bloody, um, just in a, just a grotesque, horrible state, and he, and I, I looked, and I knew it was Jesus, you know, I, I just knew, and um, when I looked, and he's, he said to me, he said, you did this to me, yet I forgive you, because I love you, and that was my breaking point, that was really my breaking point, because I realized that my sin, the sin that I enjoyed doing, the hatred that I loved keeping was actually destroying the one who loves me the most. Ever since then, uh, it's just been a, a walk with the Lord, step by step. He, uh, afterwards, um, at the very end of high school, he called me to Christ for the Nations Institute, where I'm at right now, with my brother Jacob. <laughs> and we're having such an amazing time here. Um, but as amazing as this time is, it's just a stepping stone to what God has really called me to be. The dream that God put on my heart is a simple one, yet it has so much of a burden. Not, it, not a bad burden, but a godly burden. And the Lord has called me to preach the gospel, His gospel. The only gospel that can save, the only gospel that can change the world. And... It's not going to be easy. I'm going to be persecuted. I'm going to be hated. And I'm going to be disliked by even my own family. But I really don't care. Because he called me to it. And if it's his will, it's his bill. I can smile. Smile at your teeth. <laughs> keep going. Just keep doing random facial stuff. No. We're <laughs> having